Hey YouTube, and here's yet another video. Yes, I am uh, spending way too much money, but I cannot help it. Um, this is the last gun I'll probably be getting for a while until I recuperate the uh, many thousands of dollars I've spent. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, anyway, um, this is the gun I actually wanted to buy before I bought the, uh, the, the Sharps rifle in my previous video. Uh, the reason why I walked away from this one was because the stock in the back, uh, where the the where you put your hand for the triggers, is cracked, um, and I also didn't know much about it. Uh, the store that was selling it was trying to tell me that it was pre-war, yet they don't know the date on it. Uh, they didn't know anything about it. Yada yada. It seems to be typical for a lot of gun shops around here in Northern Virginia. They don't. Uh, I mean, I hate to talk shit about shops, but they don't, you know, take the time to look up something that they're selling, especially if it's old like this. Um, that's a little frustrating, um, but uh, I did the research myself, and I'll show you guys what I found. So this is a, uh, forgot the measurements, I believe it's 26 or 28 inch side-by-side uh, -side double barrel shotgun, um, made in Germany. As you can see, the barrel, or the barrels, I try to do this with one hand. Um, this is not pitting. It's some kind of dirt or something. Uh, when I used a uh, silicone cloth, it started to rub right off. But as you can see, the barrels are in really good shape. Um, the barrels are marked... Um, Forgive me, um, I'm half German, but I don't speak it, so, uh, Flush, Stag, Krupp, uh, Ascent, and I know what Krupp means, Krupp is Krupp Steel, so, uh, based on the research I read, uh, Krupp Steel, uh, side-by-side -side shotguns are nitro-tested, so they can use modern ammunition, um, the only thing is I wouldn't use steel balls or anything like that, I'd probably stick with lead. Um, probably buckshot or birdshot, something like that. Um, the release for the uh, barrels is in excellent condition. It's perfectly straight. Uh, a lot of older shotguns that are used a lot have, have uh, left play. There is no play at all on this. As a matter of fact, it's really stiff to use. Um, you can see the engravings on it are beautiful. And this orange stuff is not rust. Uh, I originally thought it was. It's some kind of coating that used to be on the metal. Uh, whatever orange you see on there is whatever's left of it. Um, but look at those engravings. Even the screws right there are engraved. I'm not sure what the engravings are. Uh, you can see the barrels are sealed really well. There's no gaps. Um... The safety works. Turn the safety off. The triggers work. Um, I have to open up the, uh, the shotgun in order for the uh, the triggers to uh, arm themselves. And here's the bottom of the gun. Sorry if my camera is pointed the wrong way. It's a uh, Gusloff Work Waffen Work Sewell. Um, and from what I've dug up, uh, Gusloff Work was formed in the 1800s uh, by, I can't remember his first name, but uh, Guslav, of course. And apparently he's really famous in Germany. He worked with the Nazi party um, back when the Nazis uh, acquired a lot of the Jewish, um, you know, uh, money and lands and all the businesses and stuff. And when Nazi Germany was in full force, they combined all of the, uh, let me sit down, they combined all of the... Um, major manufacturers of parts and steel and so forth into five uh, five entities that work together to make uh, firearms. And Guslav Work made uh, bicycles, they made small arms, you know, like shotguns, pistols, rifles. Uh, I believe they even made the famous um, Mauser rifle. Um, and... Uh, yeah, uh, the company was later changed to Waffenwerk, um, Guslav Work, Waffenwerk, I uh, can't remember the, the, the full name, but Sewell is one of the older names, I believe. Um, 
You can even see that the uh, finger guard is engraved. Uh, there's the other side. Again, this is not pitting. I don't. It scratches. It, it could be minor rust, but I'm gonna um, sand that down with some uh, steel wool if I can, and then keep the gun oiled. I don't think it needs its coating removed. Um, I think it'll be fine as long as I keep it away from moisture. Um, let me open up the barrel real quick. Uh, this one is an auto ejecting barrel. As you can see, the auto ejection right there. So when you open it up, the shell should pop out for easier access. The barrels themselves, um, it's hard to tell on camera, but they're in really great shape. Um, anything you see in there is just dirt and debris. It just needs cleaned up. Um, the uh, stampings are on the other side. So let me take this apart. One second. hard to do this with one hand so here are the stampings on the uh, barrel itself underneath it or both barrels um, as you can see it says 16 gauge on the top so it's 16 gauge shells 70 millimeter is extremely rare apparently um, the Germans use two and a half or 65 millimeter uh, shells and that is nearly impossible to find in the United States so the collectors in the United States who want these guns are looking for the 70 millimeter barrels, which is the ones uh, that these are. So they use two and three quarter shells. So on top of being nitro tested, it can use modern size shells so you don't have an issue finding them. As you can see, the stamp there uh, is a German Imperial Eagle with an N underneath it. And the N denotes Nazi Germany. Uh, I don't know what the symbol underneath that is with the shield, um, but underneath the 242 is the date code. So it was built in February of 1942. So this is a war era gun. Um, was it ever used in the war? I'm not sure. Probably. Um, apparently these guns can also be stamped with um, imports or exports, so like um, uh, exporting it to the United States and so forth. But I highly doubt in 1942 Germany was exporting guns to the United States. So this uh, shotgun could have very well been used in the war, and it might have been used on somebody. Who knows? Um, hopefully not, but uh, it's very possible. Um, and you can see the stamps for Guslov on both barrels and another Nazi stamp right there. Um, uh, uh, Guslov work, uh, Waffen work, Sewell. Um, so yeah, there it is. If the information I made is wrong, uh, please correct me, but this is just what I have dug up, so um, I'm pretty sure it's Nazi Germany. 242 is the clear code right there for being built in February of 1942. I've seen other shotguns like this with different date codes, um, and they all say the same thing, so... But uh, yeah, it's it's in, it's in fantastic condition. I cannot believe I found something like this. Uh, the only problem is the stock. Here, I'll show you guys the stock. And it's a pretty big negative, and it's what made me walk away from it in the beginning. But as you can see, it's cracked right in the bottom of the safety down here. Uh, it goes all the way to the side. It actually stops. It stops right here. So it's not all the way through. Um, I actually believe it's only halfway through the wood. You know, the, th the thickness of the wood here is only halfway through. It didn't go like completely through it. Um, I do believe this could be repaired somehow. Um, a lot of the uh, uh, gunsmiths I'm talking to are saying it's unrepairable, toss the stock, get a new one. I, I don't really want to do that. So I think what I might attempt to do after some research is drilling into the uh, cracks uh, with a small drill bit and putting a wooden dowel inside with some glue, uh, kind of splitting the wood open if I can to get the uh, glue inside of there. Uh, and then clamp it down, you know, keep the dowels inside of the holes that I drilled, and uh, hope that that works. Um, we'll see. I don't really want to screw up the original stock, but, I mean, it's already cracked, so what can you do? So, uh, the video is about to end because I'm running out of time, but, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little history lesson. I know I did. Uh, my wallet didn't, but, uh, yeah, thank you very much.